want to talk a bit about this really cool amp. Years ago I went to see a fellow named Aaron Garner play and uh, he got a fabulous guitar tone in a very small venue and uh, this was the amp he was using. Unfortunately since then it's uh, kind of uh, stopped working properly so he sent it over to me to have a look at. But this was sort of my benchmark for uh, great 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 low volume tone for years so we're gonna have a close look at it. So I went to play the amp and I think it's still on. Uh, first thing I notice of course is the pilot light is not working. Check the fuse, the fuse is good but uh, other than a hum there's nothing coming out. Oops. Oops. You can hear what's going on. The cool thing is that's already pretty easy to figure out. We're getting a loud pop from the amp when we're trying to put the input jack in and uh, we're getting some hum from the amp so that's telling us right away that a good portion of the circuit is working and probably we're going to find the problem right near the input jack and hopefully have this thing back up and running and sounding fabulous in short order. Okay, I want to give you guys the first clue as to why Gibson amps never get anywhere near as much love as Fender amps. I finally figured out how to get inside the chassis and believe it or not, you have to remove the back panel. Two bolts come from the inside, which you have to figure out where they are before you start bolting them. Then in order to remove the chassis, you have to disassemble the box and remove the speaker baffle. In order to do that, you have to remove four bolts and unsolder the speaker lines from the speaker. So already, we're, you know, if you're a service technician, you're not happy with this thing because you've already spent three quarters of your time just figuring out how to get into the box. By the way, there's a rubber stamp here, which hopefully you can see. This amp was built in 1963. Uh, looks like it really hasn't been serviced since. There's the original filter cap and uh, not much to it. Point to point wired. The real old fashioned way everything's flying leads. Anyway, we'll continue from here. Okay, so what we're doing here is called a pop test, which is we've got our voltmeter and if we tap where the signal comes in from the jack, we've got a dummy jack installed, we're getting nothing, but when we tap where there's output from the tube we get a crackle. So my first conclusion here is that that 6EU7 tube is no good and that's probably why this amp isn't working. So we'll have to get a replacement for that. I thought I had one but I do not have one in my stash of stuff and we'll probably have to order up that filter cap or figure out how we're going to re configure that setup in order to get a filter network that's identical to the original one which is important to get the same sound uh, with uh, uh, without uh, identical to the original one uh, because most likely that particular filter is no longer available probably hasn't been for years so we're stuck here for now okay this is that uh, fantastic sounding Gibson Skylark that uh, belongs to my friend Aaron Garner. Wow. saturated tone right away which is why it sounds so great very low volume too cool amp now we just got to do the filter cap and uh, caps and uh, tidy it up 
Okay, so I've been working on this Gibson amp that has this uh, pretty trashed filter, and unfortunately it's a 3-in-1 filter, which is almost impossible to get. Uh, so the solution I've come up with is to get three brand new uh, Sprague Atom caps, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a typical clap uh, cap clamp that uh, would be used on one of them, and then I'm going to tie all three together uh, using cable ties or something to uh, create the triple uh, triple guy I need. Unfortunately, it's going to take up a little more space, so there's going to be some pretty uh, interesting wiggling involved, but it should create a, uh, uh, a stable setup that'll be good for uh, as long as the other one lasted, which is probably about almost 40 years. Okay, so this amp is done. Uh, there was a loose connection over here we resoldered. Um, it replaced a popped bypass cap for the cathode bypass and the uh, output bias, and came up with an ugly but effective uh, way of tying three caps together and using the original mounting to uh, get three brand new filter caps in there. This amp should be good for another uh, 20 or 30 years at this point. So this is probably one of my favorite all-time amps for tone. Uh -huh.